Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Digital Ship webinar of February 25th. It's 10 a.m. sharp in London, and we are bringing you a story about modern modular television for seafarers to relax, available even on smaller ships. And our guest speaker is Stefan Graf, founder and business development lead of Sea Systems. Sea Systems is also sponsoring this webinar. Very soon, Stefan will tell you in detail how it's all possible, and we'll have a nice Q&A discussion moderated by Carl Jeffries, founding editor of Digital Ship. Carl, can you please warm us up with some context before the discussion? Okay, thank you. So satellite TV is something we've never given that much attention to, and from the little I've learned about it preparing for this, I can see we, we probably should. So you've got lots of seafarers spending a lot of time at sea more than they'd like to. They've got laptops and phones with them. You've got satellite TV being broadcast in lots of parts of the world. And as we all know from home, it's quite easy to get technology which can store the TV and send it out through Wi-Fi networks. What we'd really like is seafarers being able to watch what they want, when they want, each watching on their own device. And of course, it's much cheaper from the satellite point of view if the TV is already being broadcast rather than if you have to have it streamed specially. We've all seen what you can do in airlines with your own TV programs on your seats. So... I don't know how many ships still just have the old TV room with a, lots of old videos and DVDs, but we should be getting beyond that now. And we also hear a lot of problems on the SATCOM side with SATCOMs being blocked by seafarers trying to download their own Netflix and YouTube. So perhaps we, perhaps we can fix that problem too. So what we're gonna hear about today is a system, it's a sort of a mixture between an airline video system and, and live TV. So crew can watch whatever they want in their cabins, getting stuff by Wi-Fi. They can set the system to record programs themselves and watch them when it's convenient to them. We're going to hear about what TV can do for seafarers' health, which is a quite positive story, but also one you can spread around your own companies to help encourage them. The same system, you can use it for company communications, like captains sending urgent messages to crew members. So our presenter today, Sea Systems, they're an equipment manufacturer and they've got distributors which sell the system around the world. Um, they've got a, about three to 5% of their revenue comes from their home country of Sweden. And they're gonna show you some of the costings that, they actually, that their customers actually pay during the, during the webinar. The content is another issue. So there's different arrangements with content TV companies and the shipping company would have to make their own arrangement with the content provider, which is a, a separate part of this. So Stefan Graf, our speaker, is from Denmark, but he, and he's a business development leader, Sea Systems, and he founded the company himself with his wife in 2013. So I'd like to invite Stefan to give his talk. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Carl and uh, Vida, for <clears throat> your introduction. And I'm just going to share my screen now with you guys. And hello to everyone. Uh, Happy to be here. Um, do you see my screen now? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah. So today, uh, just very briefly, uh, present the company that uh, that me and my wife uh, founded, and uh, then uh, explain a little bit about uh, crew welfare and, and why it's important in today's uh, maritime uh, sector. Then go in to explain something about our uh, IPTV solution that Carl was introducing. And then uh, uh, lastly, about where to get more information about the system. So as Carl was saying, a sea system is, uh, is today a company uh, that has its home in Sweden, in the southern part of Sweden. And, and uh, we were founded in 2013. But it's a, it's a family company that, uh, that has uh, many, many years on its back. Uh, so originally it was my father-in-law who started uh, this line of business. And it's been uh, within entertainment distribution all, all of the years. And, and we estimate we have about 70,000 systems um, in, in, uh, in the maritime sector uh, on a global basis over the years. Um, so the products, the heritage products that we sell today and, and our main bread and butter portfolio is uh, to rest reception and, and distribution, which of course has been here for a very long time. And, and we still feel they have a very uh, important uh, part of the future as well, because you can get content uh, free to air. Uh, so so uh, this is very uh, 
attractive for, for ships being close to shore and, and will also be in the future. But basic, very compact portfolio today, easy to install and, and just, you know, uh, works very well. Um, in recent years, we also uh, have added uh, digital modulators to be able to, you know, connect uh, uh, other equipment uh, and stream that as well. And then what it's all about today, the, the IPTV solutions, which, which I'll be explaining to you. And, um, and, ba and the basic idea uh, behind the, the IPTV solution was that we found that a, a lot of, especially smaller projects were saying no to, to IPTV because of very high base costs. And then we said, okay, we, we, that's a pity. What, what can we do to, to, um, to make it more attractive for them? So the idea was to make the IPTV solution uh, very, very modular and scalable. So basically you start any project with an empty box and then you look at the customer's uh, requirements and then we, we match features required with input output modules and, and the right software. So you, you only pay for what you need uh, for, for the specific project, which of course helps uh, more owners say yes to, to this solution. That's what we found. Um, but basically, before going into the solution, I wanted to say a few words on, uh, on crew welfare. Um, and Inmarsat uh, made some research last year and made a really good report that highlights some of the challenges that seafarers have globally today. And, and what that found was that um, compared to other areas um, on a ship, other, other technologies being forwarded uh, in the maritime sector, actually uh, the life quality and the well-being of, of crew was, uh, was being underfunded. That was, that was what they found. Uh, and that we, we need to fund crew welfare and we need to, to, um, yeah, to, to pay more attention to this because this will also be very important for the future and the future of the business. But of course, what they found was that during COVID-19, everything just became more uh, pressing. So we have about 600,000 seafarers on a global basis uh, who, who, has, who has either stranded on ships today due to travel, travel restrictions and, uh, or they are left uh, unemployed uh, at shore. So they, they, uh, the report called this a humanitarian, a humanitarian crisis. And, and it also found that seafarers who are depressed and, and uh, suffer from anxiety, they are, they are twice as likely to get injured um, while they are uh, working on, on the vessel. So, so we say this, of course, uh, crew welfare is very important uh, um, normally, but especially now with COVID-19. And then I, I did some work trying to, um, to find what is actually good health. And um, across the board, when you look at research that is being done to, to, uh, to explain what good health is, is that it's being divided into, into different areas uh, of, of, a, of a human's life. So physical, emotional, spiritual, intellectual, occupational, and social in this case. And then they list a lot of uh, activities that promote good health. And of course, this is also the same set of activities that, that uh, is important on, on a ship or on, uh, in the maritime sector. And, and then looking at these, uh, we highlight here in green, which ones are, are kind of uh, important when it comes to, to tele television, good quality television. So we say that um, good quality entertainment and television and music in the right amount, context, context and content can uh, contribute to the health and well-being of crew in the maritime sector. And when we say amount, we mean it's the same thing that um, is important on land is that we, we, we don't want to see crew uh, spending all their days watching TV. And of course they should not do that because of course they have a lot of work chores. So, so they should use it for disengagement and, and joy instead of you know, binge watching series over and over because that's unhealthy. And then they should do it rather socially than alone in their rooms. Of course they can be alone in the room, but, but it, it, uh, television works really well seen uh, with, with friends um, in, in, a, in a social uh, gathering. And then so, something on the content as well that 
that it's it's uh, it's shown that uh, when you are when when you want to avoid anxiety and depression, then then you have uh, then it's better to see feel, feel good uh, content, and you can see documentaries and you can you can even see you know cooking training cooking classes and and trying to evolve professionally, which is important, um, rather than just watching you know criminal or um, war movies that kind of things that's also okay but it should be balanced so so um so yes um television and music plays a, an important role in in the balanced life of crew welfare i would say so then going into the solution that we have uh, let's start with an overview so this is basic the basically the, the system and, and what we have is, is a single head end, so it's a very compact portfolio. And then you basically input everything you need for a modern uh, TV service. So, so you have terrestrial signals, satellite signals, we have HDMI for, you know, Blu-ray, central Blu-ray. We have, uh, you know, you can input a CCTV stream for your, um, for your CCTV cameras. <clears throat> and then on the other side, we have we are very flexible in terms of the output, so you can do it either to coax or different ways uh, using the IP protocol, so the CAT6 cable that you know from your, your yeah, computer network. And then as Carl was saying, we also have the option to stream over Wi-Fi for mobile devices, and, and this is also becoming very popular there these days that people want to watch it on their iPads or on their own uh, PCs. <clears throat> yeah, and, and we've been working with this uh, IPTV solution over the last couple of years, and we have a number of uh, completed projects here in Scandinavia. And we thought now is the time to, uh, to take this into the uh, international arena. And so that's why I'm also doing this webinar today to, to uh, hopefully get some uh, uh, interest from uh, from a lot of different places and um, I wanted to sh also show you uh, um, um, an example of a, of a quotation that we do for customers and uh, or partners and in this case it shows you uh, the, the the modular design we have so these are all the different features we can uh, we can offer and then, um, and then for uh, in this case, it was a project for 46 televisions, and it ends at around 22,000 euros, uh, the list price to, to our customer. And of course, our partners then get a, a discount on that. But, um, but it's, it's not so much to say whether this is expensive or cheap, it's more to give you an idea about all the modules we have. So if you don't need a feature, we simply just take it out. Um, another important uh, feature in any IPTV solution is, is the interfaces. So this is the interface you see in the, in the cabins. And it's basically what you know from uh, what Carl was saying, an airplane or, or an, our hotel, where you use your television remote to either watch the available TV channels, uh, go to the movie on demand uh, menu, you can watch your, uh, your recordings and, and you can also see all the messages that were sent to, to your cabin. And, uh, and if the administrator wants to send a message, um, he can also do that so that it pops up in the middle of the screen and then you have to say okay to let him know that, that he's gotten the, the message. And uh, lastly, there's a safety uh, menu that tells you maybe you know, uh, what to do in, in, in case of an emergency or fire on board. And, and another, and another um, uh, um, type of interfaces is, of course, the, the, the administrative interfaces which you use to set up the whole system. And we have worked a lot with making them, you know, easy to use and, and, uh, and uh, so that installers are able to, to install everything. And, uh, but that is for another course, I think, where we deep dive into, into all these technicalities with the interfaces. Um, just a quick um, uh, to uh, point about the mobile devices. So basically what you do is if you have this feature, you type in the correct URL in, the, in your uh, search engine and then the same TV portal pops up uh, on, your, on your mobile device. 
and it basically has the same features as you find on the television. <clears throat> yes, that was that was the that was the short introduction of of the system that we have, and I'm happy to take all kinds of technical uh, questions uh, afterwards. I wanted to get back to this uh, with the with the maritime uh, sector and the crew welfare. And, and during the research, I found this picture, which I thought described uh, what we want really well, actually. So, I mean, here we see, uh, we see relationships on board with crew members. We see maybe friendships in the back there. We see that, uh, that people are relaxing and we see uh, that it's a good place to disengage and, um, and you know, talk about your interests and your hobbies. And of course, there's a television as well. So, I mean, every Wednesday you might have a movie night where you eat popcorn and, and enjoy yourself uh, in, in, the, in, the, um, yeah, in the company of your, of your co-workers. So we say, I mean, great IPTV is just one factor that can help you uh, forward uh, crew, crew welfare. Um, but there are a lot of other factors as well. That was it. Um, and this is me, and I welcome you to reach out to me at any time. And then there are some links to where you can read more about um, the website and, and our, our IPTV solution. So I welcome you to use it. Oh, well, that's great. Thank you. And I'd like to invite the audience to put out any questions in the Q&A box. Um, and just to start off with, I'm intrigued by the kind of international aspect of this. I mean, I know with Stena Line, a lot of their crew are Filipino, or they are for the ferry that goes to Hook of Holland anyway. Um, I don't know what Filipinos want to watch on TV. It probably wants to be something in their own language or maybe they're happy with English language. I don't know, you don't get into the content side of it, but I suppose it's quite important for people to understand what, what's possible with this. I don't know if you can explain a bit more about a traditional setup in terms of what programs people are getting or is it more? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean uh, it's basically up to our, our uh, the, the, the vessel owners, you know, they have satellites and, and what kind of channels or content they can, they can get from that satellite, I think is very broad today. And then of course, uh, what kind of, uh, if they have the video on demand feature, what kind of uh, content they want to put on, uh, on there. So, I mean, they can make different um, agreements with different uh, content providers in their own region and then, and then see, you know, if it's uh, Bollywood movies or whatever, I'm, I'm sure that there are people out there offering that as well. I, mean, I don't have much idea what's actually being broadcast. I mean, a Bollywood movie has been broadcast in Europe via satellite, for example. Is that a? <clears throat> I guess they have thousands of channels from these satellites these days, do they? Yes, I'm sure that there are, you know, a lot of different uh, something for everyone. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are most of your customers sort of regional shipping companies, or do you have international companies as well using it? For... We we uh, we are not so much um, as you said. We are network. Uh, we have a professional network of distributors, uh, and in their in their uh, case, they have have the end customers. So uh, so so we 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 are all over the world. You can say, but with the IPT, we uh, this is still a um, new business for us. So I mean, we are we are getting our first clients in Asia and, and in the US uh, and in the broader Europe as well. So that's very exciting. And of course, you know, we are all the time developing because now we see that there are special cases. Uh, yeah, for example, in the US, they don't um, they don't have a DVB-C. They have a, another format of of, of uh, television. So those are some things we're working on integrating. Wow. Okay. So we've got two technical questions. Well, on the uh, on the Q and A. So uh, Peter Robertson is asking if the uh, ship's PA broadcasts the public address system is is able to switch it off. And uh, Gregor's Pardika is asking. Oh crikey, maybe you'll understand this one better than me. How you? Uh, <laughs> so DVDT is the uh, satellite broadcast, and we're streaming it onto the local area network over TCP/IP. Yes, that's exactly what we do. I don't know what ABCD yeah. scenarios mean, but maybe you know. But do you want to make take those two? Um, so to answer the first one, yes, absolutely. I think uh, I think it's law today that the PA system is able to override the entertainment uh, system. So we have a we have a, a, a PA muting module that actually allows you to do uh, different things. So you can 
Of course, you can mute uh, in, in, in case of emergency or if you want to play a, a welcome movie. Um, so we have uh, three or four different scenarios where you can where you can trigger a muting of the system, which is quite flexible. That's so for yes, ferries, I guess. Normal that. ships wouldn't have a PA system, would they? I would have thought. Yeah. Just... And then. Um, Let me see the other question. Yes, that's correct. So yeah, we can combine a um, DVB-T and, uh, and DVB-S uh, and broadcast that o over uh, the LAN network, the IP network, yes. And also over a coax network using DVB-C uh, format. Um, yes, yes. Anshul is asking about the bandwidth, but I guess you don't need normal. I don't know if he means the bandwidth or board or the bandwidth for the ship. You're not using normal. No, yeah, we are not using. Uh, we are not using. This is an offline. Uh, this is an offline system, so we don't need any bandwidth uh, from the internet uh, while uh, watching this content. Uh, oh. And of course. Uh, the, the bandwidth that you need to broadcast the content, you you uh, you set that up when you configure uh, the input output modules to make sure that that you have enough um, the, enough of the dif different modules to actually uh, distribute to the right number of cabins. So that's all taken care of during pro the project. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I guess the most complicated part of this is working out what you can get and where with so many different global systems. I mean, I was a bit confused with it when you mentioned terrestrial TV, but I realised that means TV being broadcast from the land rather than TV being broadcast by satellite, isn't it? I guess every part of the world has some terrestrial TV, but it may not be in the same language as the uh, crew are speaking in, isn't it? But I guess that's all stuff people figure out as they go along, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So Colin French is asking, how does content get updated if it's offline i guess uh, you mean you maybe yeah, a I mean, more precise uh, explanation about what of course, <laughs> of course the content that comes from terrest and uh, and and satellite is is live television so that's updated by the service provider the tv service provider and then uh, our the typical um, um, way that our that the owners are, are using this is that they agree to uh, to get uh, updated uh, video on demand content, maybe on a monthly basis, they pay a subscription and then and then they're able to upload new content. Um, either you can do it uh, at night when there's no, uh, you know, uh, when there's no uh, other um, internet um, being uh, being used, then they can uh, you can up update uh, your video on demand server, or you do it in shore. Um, uh, yeah, simply some of them uses uh, uses uh, uh, DVDs that they then upload into our system. That way, we have a process for doing that. So, so, so um, as soon as there is something new in your subscription of video on, on demand, you can update update that on the on the server. Wow, I mean, a DVD file is about a gigabyte or something. You'd never send a DVD over a satellite connection, would you? You can, you can uh, uh, slowly download that during uh, during the night uh, when there's nothing else going on. Otherwise, it's a it's a it's a physical hard drive that you ship to the ship, or or you can do it uh, while you are at shore. Um, yeah. Okay, so so Reza is asking uh, about if the master can block some TV channels. <laughs> I think we can get an idea what kind of channels he means. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that's something that uh, the administrator is able to do all the time, of course, make uh, uh, what, what kind of uh, content is what kind of areas and televisions able to see uh, that, uh, that can all be controlled from the interface, the admin interface. Oh, so uh, Gregor's is, uh, I don't know about these uh, DVB systems myself, but I expect you do. So DVBS and DVBC, can you use them at the same time? Maybe you explain what they, DVBS and CR, maybe there's different telecommunication protocols, I suppose. Yeah, normally, normally a DVB, DVBS, that is satellite. And, right. uh, and, uh, and yes, we can, uh, we can receive DB, DVBS uh, at the same time as, as we receive uh, DVBT from the terrestrial. And then, uh, and then uh, that is either modulated and and sent out over IP, or it's uh, it's uh, it's sent out over coax uh, network in in the vessel using DVB-C, and all modern televisions today uh, typically receive DVB 
T and DVBC uh, uh, as well. So that's that's no problem to do that simultaneously. Oh, how does the storage work on board? Then I suppose data storage is pretty cheap these days. You can basically store as much as people might possibly want for as long as they want, or does it have to? Yeah, we have we have uh, we have a two terabyte and a four terabyte uh, hard drive that we offer, and I mean the small one will uh, will you know let you. Uh, store about a thousand movies so uh, you can have a lot of content either video on demand or, or recordings on that and you know if it if it should ever be uh, you know being close to the limit uh, you can go in and, and easily raise some old uh, old content uh, of course somebody has to sort of manage that do they or yeah yeah that's managed from the administrative interface um, also, uh, for example, you can record continuously record live uh, channels, uh, a number of live channels, and you can say whether that should be, you know, a twenty-six, uh, a thirty-six hour window or twenty-four hour window. I mean, that's also some things you can set uh, that has a that has a big impact on how much hard drive is used, storage is used. Yeah, I'm just thinking maybe if there's a football game with all the crew coming from the country that's playing and they all want to watch it, but are they all sort of setting it to store this game separately? So you're storing the same game 20 times or something, or maybe there's... Yeah, is yes, all so that. That, that is something, uh, sports is uh, something that a lot of people stores because they don't want to miss it. So if they, are, if they are working and there's a football game, of course, they want to see it the day after. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you can tell us any more about how customers are typically using it, because I think that's all very interesting and helps people get a sense of how how it can work. I don't know how much you get into how your customers are using it or what, what kind of nationalities you're able to tell us without sort of violating confidentiality or something. Yeah, I mean, they they again, what you said in the, in, in, in the introduction, Carl, is that, you know, uh, seafarers are no uh, different from, you know, everybody else. And the way uh, and the way you and me uses a, a television uh, on land is basically uh, what we try to achieve uh, uh, when they are when they're working on, on their vessel. So they they um, they have a menu uh, that easily allows them to you know go to uh, all available TV channels. What kind of things are on? If uh, if EPG data is available from the satellite, they also have the program of what's coming uh, later in the afternoon or. Uh, in the evening and, and basically the hardest part using this system is you know uh, as, as you and me what, 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 what kind of movie do we want to see uh, next that's, that's the hardest part of, of uh, choosing sometimes because the system is, is easy to use I would say uh, especially for the crew Oh, do most of your customers, what, what do they have already? Is probably something very, very old or with no connectivity at all. Is that the sort of typical? Yeah, the typical, the typical uh, case that we hear about is that they have an old analog uh, TV system oh. and, uh, and with coax. And, uh, and in this case, uh, either they are, you know, um, debating whether to go uh, to IP, so lay IP network, or, or keep the coax. And of course, we can tell them that... Uh, they can they can get a, a long way with using the old uh, coax network and uh, of course they will have less features less iptv features because coax is only one-way communication and an iptv uh, typically needs two-way communication for video on demand and all that to to work but but what they can do is that uh, then they get a modern uh, tv service with uh, digital content which is much better you know quality than uh, than the old analog um, content and and um, yeah yeah so that's the main uh, the main benefit so I think we have something for for all kind of cases and of course uh, for a new build installing IP network I mean this is uh, this is a, a no brainer um, yeah because you have a lot of uh, different options to offer your crew yeah I suppose most ships have got Wi-Fi systems if they're new I suppose are they or I don't know how many ships do or they've got some kind of network connection going into the cabins and things like that i mean some uh, especially ferries and, and stuff like that is is, uh, is coming now with um, more and more wi-fi wi-fi uh, uh, capability um, and and in the case of uh, of uh, the, what we offer again the wi-fi has nothing to do with uh, with with internet mm -hmm. so in this case is is simply a feature saying that if you have infra you can you can have infrastructure Wi-Fi infrastructure 
uh, without internet, but but using that Wi-Fi infrastructure, you can broadcast uh, uh, TV services to uh, to mobile devices. So it's basically adding a layer of uh, Wi-Fi equipment, and then your crew can can watch content wherever they are, as long as there's Wi-Fi coverage in the area. Wow. And another angle here is helping sell this thing internally. So you, you mentioned the stuff about Seafarer Health, and I think you mentioned something before about, about training, because training is something which will help companies persuade their senior managers to agree. Did you have any customers putting crew training courses on this so crew can watch them in their bedrooms and this kind of thing? It's, it's, a, good, it's a very good point, because it's something I'm, I'm thinking more and more about when, when I'm reading, you know, about all the trends happening right now, especially with COVID-19, where, where training is becoming, you know, something you do uh, um, electronically. But of course, that, that requires uh, internet. So, uh, so it's, it's interesting to look into. We, we have not had, had that request yet. But of course, as I wrote, um, that the content can, uh, can be courses, it can be, you know, master classes, whatever. I'm also thinking that it could be a content that that the ship owner makes, you know, for training purposes or or what kind of uh, yeah uh, legal things is important that that they could take some kind of courses, you know, just watching it on television. So I think that's a, that's an interesting uh, input. Yeah, I'm that's going to introduce you to VideoTel, which is now called OTG after the phone, because they, they have 800 videos, but they, they don't have any infrastructure for sharing it on board the ship that I know about to Kufero's cabin. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic infrastructure you can have. You can do all kinds of things when you've got this on board, haven't you? I think it's. Yeah, a, yeah absolutely. Seems like something that every, every company ought to have, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's. Yeah, that sounds great. I don't, I don't see any more questions coming up. So, I mean, if you'd like to take a couple of minutes to do some closing words, and I think, I think we can leave it there if you like. But yeah, thank yeah you. I mean, it would just be that uh, that it's my job to uh, to help, uh, you know, build our business here. So uh, I welcome uh, all kinds of, uh, of of input from uh, from all over the world and, and uh, technical questions. And, and I'm also doing, you know, more technical introductions where we show more techni technical stuff. And and Carl and Vida, you of course know that because I took you through that, and and you told me not so technical today, more about you know the soft side of things. So I tried to do that, but I'm happy to uh, to go into more details uh, also in webinars like that. So it's please just use my contacts and reach out to me, and then uh, and then we can take it. Uh, um, from there and of course i always make a point of uh, of you know um, uh, saying that we have really good partners uh, all over the world so so they are also um, very capable of helping you and once we have the technical stuff um, being taken care of i'm i'm really happy to uh, also hand anyone over to the to our partner network uh, wherever that's uh, that is uh, in the world oh that's, that's great me well, I hope that's an exciting story for everybody. I shall pass back to Vida for the closing words. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Wow. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, we'll make this video available. Also, Stefan's contacts available for you to further chat. Uh, short announcement about next week. Uh, next Thursday, we are canceling our webinar because simply the group of speakers didn't form up. Uh, but we are waiting you back in March, uh, March 9th, and we are jumping into weather routing. Uh, so Digital Ship is, is signing off now. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh.